I had already been an activist before Pudama was born. The New Swaziland will not be written without the Mario story. Because without the Mario story, the story will be incomplete. He was a resolute person. He was a, a person law who, who was ready to die for what he believed in. I would be somewhere in the schoolyard being a Form 3 student or whatever. Then you would hear people, you know, running around and telling you uh, Mufasa is around. That's the nickname they gave him at school for some reason. As a young boy who grew up in the rural areas myself, you know, we were made to believe that the king is uh, infallible. But Mario demystified that for young people like myself. We are tired of sitting down in Skuluma about our freedom. Our freedom must be demanded by the people themselves. Let us move on the ground and demand our freedom. I grew up like any other young Swazi uh, uh, boy, heading cattle. Uh, eating nearly nothing because I come from uh, a family that did not have all that they wanted. I went to a high school in Swaziland called Evelyn Baring High School down in Shangano where I started my form, uh, my uh, form one. That school was one of the first schools to interact between black and white. I'm a member of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. That's the AME Church. This is the church that was formed by one Richard Allen in the USA. This is the church that uh, did not agree to the uh, disenfranchisement of the black people then. So it was a, a church of liberation. My father would do shopping. He would literally go to the market to buy from as many ladies from that market as he could. You'd buy onions from this one, green paper from the next one, and you know, because you've got to, to support. I happened to meet Mario, the, the, the soccer player. I happened to meet Mario, the banker, the father, the comrade. He was a, a, an internationalist because Mario, umfaga no you know, he would articulate his issues. I was employed at uh, Bank of Africa from 1971. Working in the bank opened my eyes because I became a member of the trade union movement, the, the Swaziland Bank Workers Union. I did not know when I first met him that later in my years as a lawyer I was going to represent Mario and uh, he was going to be one of my longest clients you know, in the fight for justice and democracy in Switzerland. There was a huge strike in Switzerland the, uh, under the Federation of Trade Unions where the secretary was John Stoll, SFTU. Mario and Jan Titole have had the longest fight for democracy in Switzerland. I think the two of them, uh, one would say that they, they became 
the symbol, you know, for the struggle for democracy in Switzerland, in their own right, respectively. This was, this, this was one of the, the brightest days in the history of this country. Yeah. That's why I'm not sure. I was arrested in 1989 for being a member of Pudemo and uh, charged with high treason. And of course, while I was in prison, in the maximum prison in Matapa, the bank expelled me. Where about uh, 11 of us were arrested for high treason and sedition. It was terrible, it was terrible. Number one, I said, I trust me, so I'm going to correct me, I need. I'm the only one, Lucheli, I'm the only one who I had started to associate with. Then I know my logon, I'm going to go to the gam, I'm going to go to I could not even talk about. I was taken in into isolation. You know, and it, it really kills your brain. At that time, it could have been around 10, 11 or something like that. But he, 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 he was very young. 1990 becomes bad. He gets arrested. We are moved back to Mbabane and uh, we have to move from this house to Stuasini to some small apartment uh, that was closer to the prison. I think for financial reasons, because it's not working, and also because um, it's closer to the prison. The house where they stayed was just about 100 meters away from the prison where Mario was staying. So. Every morning, when we went to court, Nzwandil and his brothers, they would stand outside their, their house. You would find us standing by the road when they would be taken, taken for remands, and we would wave to the people in the truck singing. We wouldn't see them, but we would wave, and I think generally that became Life. I live a life where my children are exposed to this, but uh, I always believed that one day we will see the light. Mario happened to be arrested around the year 2000 for addressing a rally, I think, where he called upon that the reign of the Tingunla system under the leadership of King Swati must come to an end. In the language of the struggle, he said, Pansi na Tingunla, Pansi. And he, his alleged to have said, we down with the reign of King Mswati, the third town. And in the Swazen context, that was seditious uh, in the lot of Swazen. So he was charged under the Sedition Act of 1938. I have a very clear picture of uh, Jan Sitole uh, together with Mario Masu. You know, and then Paul Shilwan and myself at the High Court arguing the case that uh, Mario's political party, Pudemo, you know, which had revived the struggle for multi-party democracy in Swaziland, had an opportunity to then play a role in the governance of Swaziland, working together with other political parties. 
police came to my house, they barricaded the, the gate, and they, when I tried to go out, they said, no, there is an order that I must not go out of my house. And uh, uh, I said, no, but I'm going out to fetch some things, buy some things in town. And then they said, no, fine. You are going to drive with this police, you go to all the places that you want, there will be an escort behind you. He's a man who, who had understood the system at its core. Uh, he had no illusions about the oppressive character of, of Tingunda, you know, uh, has, has been involved in for a long time himself. And he saw the entire document called the Constitution as a window dressing document not meant to advance the democracy in, in Swaziland. Everybody knows that uh, people are aware that uh, I'm still on an, uh, bail, under bail conditions under the Suppression of Terrorism Act uh, for which I was uh, charged in uh, uh, 2014. I think the greater interaction was when we moved uh, into, into Maxima. Because when we moved into Maxima, we then became, you know, just cellmates. But the first time when we arrived, you know, they always kept us locked into that four meter square, you know, <laughs> square room there. So we had to use the packet for all those things. And then we decided that, no, comrades, we think we need to take these issues up. You know, they could not be treating us, you know, like animals. We, we've got the rights. So that's where we then engage in the hunger strike. But when we're discussing on the question of hunger strike, I say, no, comrades, because of your health, you know, uh, you're always a, a diabetic person. You need to take special medication and some special meals at certain hours. So maybe it would be good that, you know, I take the hunger strike alone, you know. And he, he said, you know, comrades, you know, in any struggle, we all do everything for the struggle we took care. Mario struggles. Dating as far back, you know, as 1983 when Pudemo was uh, established, uh, and the many, you know, trials and tribulations he went through, starting from from the 1990 high treason trial, where he was uh, acquitted by the Court of Appeal then, you know, uh, to 2000 when he was charged with sedition and acquitted to, 2000, to 2008 when he was faced with the charge of terrorism and sedition all the way to 2014 when he was faced with the similar charges. Really is an indication of how oppressive the system uh, is to, to the people of Swaziland. There's this big cloud about Mario Masug and whatnot. My, my memory around that time was how everybody feared this big bad person, Mario Masug, especially some of the teachers. The members of the community where I come from, down in the rural areas, were clear Makosin. They were supportive. They are even now. Even anybody who goes there will tell them that uh, I am not what I am made to be, because the state here has made me, described me like an animal with horns and all that, terrorists and so forth. But at my place, many people come in there and visit me. I therefore believe that I am just part of the family and people look at me like that. He was very, very, very passionate. Ndola endako. 
na bandu mario na boats bo hamba na elape mkwa toin you'd end up taking two hours gusuga nje stalati nile sinyue lapa because he would stop everywhere talk to people kune mingo waboye bandu sometimes langa bati nekubati ni mga ke mario masubu bahambi le baye glabo bandu bahoba bahoba nkwaba ni bandu nje la shangana na bo mario uyaba kulumisa uyaba sita lala anga kona kuba sita kona eche ele kwa kona lasa sita la kona you know Una ulalela, you know, la ma officers, la la la, bese. They loved him because he was the man, lolo bega nga, bega nga alwi. But lo mundu lo tauza, ma gogusi, a, a, a share an impression, a positive impression, and the reason why he was doing what he was doing. So he was a people's person. No, no, if you, if you say, uh, despite all this harassment, you know, intimidation, uh, arrest and prosecution and persecution he never gave up so one can say that uh, the trial that mario went through it, it, it is not something that he put himself there as wanting to be a hero it was bound to okay because he was fighting an unjust and oppressive regime it was that a, a, a ability that the comet Mario had to lead you as a, a, a political figure and also to lead you raised in a, in, a, in a home that believes in justice for all taking care of your neighbor it's always been there I mean at some point we've lived in this house with as many as 19 people we have comrades who have finished school because of his own, own, from his own pocket. I got a call on Monday morning, early in the morning, you know, this is Maro, can you come into my house, you know, in Even in Baban? So I just took a bus, you know, I went back to Baban. Uh, I find him there, you know, uh, with Maga Masugu, but he was leaving Maga Masugu for his business in Manzil. So he just say hello, they offered me tea. And the interaction with Comrade Maru Masugu, just briefly about how changing these issues, you know, the victimization that comes with an activist. You know, and then out of nowhere, then he just went into his room uh, and came back, you know, uh, with 13,000 and say, no, go and register, comrade, and go back to school. So that's how I got to go back to school, you know, in 2012. We have comrades who have actually found a home in his house. They grew up there. Somebody once asked me and said, but uh, Mr. Masugo, where did this all start? And uh, I say that I'm part of the community, like I said. What hurts one person it also hurts me. Comrades! Yes. Comrades! A time will come. Yes. Indeed, it is coming. Yes. I can tell you the people of Swaziland shall see their liberation. The liberation is around the corner. The time has come when the people of Swaziland shall say enough is enough. The time has come when the people of Swaziland shall say we'll sing the song of victory to say victory at last. Victory at last. Thanks God we are liberated. They are great people that inspired me to talk uh, for the people. One has been Martin Luther King, uh, who, who had to lose his life for the people. I also was also inspired by Patrice Lumumba, a very great son of the soil. Also, O. R. Tambo has been an inspiration to me, and Albert Tuli, all the late, they have been inspiration to me. My wish and will is to walk in the footsteps of Comrade Mario. 
I think we also owe it to to his memory to actually be involved and not be passive. Too many of us are passive about so many injustices. It's really, it's really scary. His legacy is what is going to get this country out of this quagmire where the 1973 King's Decree has put us. Because the day his legacy is experienced, it will be the day people will be able to express themselves, will be able to meet without police, uh, will be able to form a government of their choice. Mario in us lives every day, and he says, Shon Jalo Sisi, Nabe Asga Mendeli Gash, and Nabo Bonke, Labanya de Sebakville, Umabe Sesna Yegela, Snaga achieve what he, he, he wanted to achieve. Let us come together. How long are we going to be suppressed by a one family government? How long are we going to allow ourselves to be suppressed by friends and relatives of that government? No, we cannot. I believe that one day the people of Swaziland, the people of my country will sing a song to say yes, free at last, free at last.